In this video, I'm going to calculate the Fourier series of a periodic function. It's going to be a piecewise constant periodic function. So let's draw a picture of the function and figure out some of the basic features that we'll be able to take advantage of. So I want a function that is it's 1 from 0 to 1. So we start at 0 up to 1. And then at 1, it jumps down to minus 1. And it stays down there until 2 when it returns. And that is going to be the period. So if I were to continue this, you would have uh, you know, more repetitions of that pattern. And it would keep going. And you could imagine it going backwards in time. But I'm going to deal with just this f of t for t positive and think about an initial value problem for a second order equation here. OK, and so the period here, the period has t equal to 2. All right, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to try and write down f of t. We're going to approximate that. And it's, this is going to be a pretty good approximation in most places. It'll have some trouble with the jumps, but we'll talk about that a little later. So a0 is the first term, and we're going to add a whole bunch of cosine terms from n equal 1 to infinity of a n cosine of, and now we need 2 n pi over capital T times t, and then add to that a sine series. So this is going to be sine of 2 n pi over t times t. Now, let me, uh, let me just copy over the formulas that I had from a previous video. And there, magically appearing, are the formulas. So um, what we can do is we can take advantage of some uh, symmetry features in order to calculate some of these coefficients. So uh, let's just look at what I mean by that. And so let's draw the function going back in time to minus 1. And we'll see uh, that this function that I've defined is an odd function. That means that if I go to a t value, f of minus t will be equal to negative f of t. So that means that the function is odd. Um, and you can see that because if you think of, if you pin down the origin and then spin your paper 180 degrees, you get the same function back. And that's what it means to be odd. All right, so what do we know about odd functions? Well, if you take the integral of an odd function from minus a to a dt, that will always be 0, because whatever area you have accumulating on the left of the origin will be accumulating in the opposite orientation on the right, and so they cancel out. So we know that we'll always get a 0 integral. Now, our formula says that we're supposed to integrate from 0 to t. But because we're integrating over a full period, integrating from 0 up until 2, that's really the same as integrating from minus 1 to 1. Or, in fact, it's the same as integrating from 0.03 to 2.03. As long as I go a full period, it doesn't matter how far, uh, away, how far I shift it. It's how long the integral is that matters. And so I could replace this by the integral from minus t over 2, oops, minus t over 2 to t over 2 of the odd function, and that gives me a 0. So because f is odd, we know that a0 is going to be 0. And there's another feature of functions. An odd function multiplied by an even function is always going to be an odd function. You should have seen that at some point in a math class, but I encourage you to go through and make sure you know that. Um, and another feature is that an odd function times an odd function is even. And so what? where does that matter? Well, here we have an odd function f of t multiplied by an even function. So the integrand here is odd and periodic. And so this one will come out to 0 as well. Now, this one is an odd function multiplied by an odd function, and it is the only one that's going to survive, and that will be uh, non-zero. All right, so 
let's do some calculating of our bn values. So bn is equal to, I'm going to replace the t by a 2. So the coefficient in front here, I get 1. And then I'm going to do the integral from 0 to 2 of, and here I'll write f of t for now, but I'll break it up in a moment. And I'll write this as multiplied by sine of, now there's a t in the denominator, so that cancels with the 2 in the numerator, 2 over 2. And so I get n pi t dt. And now how do I deal with this piecewise defined function? Well, I just break the integral up into the pieces. So I'll do an integral from 0 to 1, which is from here to here. And that one, that the value of the function in that interval is 1. So I just suppress that f of t. It's just an invisible 1 multiplying the sine function here. And then I'm going to add to that, but let me leave the sign off, the integral from 1 to 2 of, and now from 1 up until 2, I've got a negative value down here of negative 1. And so that's why I suppressed it. I'm just going to put that in now. And there's a minus, and the 1 is invisible, multiplying sine of n pi t dt. Now we can take antiderivatives, and so we end up with here the cosine of n pi t with a 1 over n pi in front, and because of the derivative of cosine, we need a minus sign there, and evaluating from 0 to 1. And then now that minus sign here makes the minus a plus, and on this side we have 1 over n pi times the cosine of n pi t evaluated from 1 to 2. So I can factor out a 1 over n pi and then um, we have, let's evaluate all the pieces. So um, I've got a minus cosine of n pi when t equal 1 plus the cosine of, oh, well it's a cosine of 0 so that's just going to be a 1 and then I have a plus the cosine of 2n pi, and then I subtract the cosine of n pi. So now it's useful to take a little digression, and let's just look at what the cosine of n pi will be. So the cosine function starts at 1, drops to 0 at pi over 2, and then by pi, it's at minus 1. And then it comes back up to 0 at 3 pi over 2, and then it goes up to 1 again by 2 pi. And it continues alternating at 3 pi, it'll be at minus 1, and then it'll come back up to 1 when it gets to 4 pi, and so on. So the cosine of n pi, you'll notice at 0, it's 1, so 0 gives me 1, and when it's 1, I get minus 1, and when it's 2, I get 1, and 3, I get minus 1, and so on. So we can write a concise formula for this, replacing cosine n pi by minus 1 to a power, it's alternating, and when it's even, it's 1, and when it's odd, it's minus 1. So if I put an n up here, this always will give me the same value. So I get minus 1 to the n as my cosine of n pi. And the cosine of 2 n pi, that will be 0 at 2 pi at 4 pi, and so on. And those values are all 1s. So cosine of 2 n pi is just a fancy way of saying 1. So let's replace those and simplify our expressions down a little bit. And then we can see what those sine coefficients will be. Uh, oh, I have a little bit more to erase. So minus 1 to the n for the cosine n pi and 1 for the cosine 2 n pi. So now we have 1 over n pi minus, minus 1 to the n plus 1 plus another 1 from the cosine 2 n pi minus minus 1 to the n. And so I can rearrange this a little bit to get 1 over n pi, and there's a 2 here, and there's 2 of these. 
So I can factor a 2 out in front here. Whoops. Factor a 2 out in front and write this as 1 minus minus 1 to the n. So I could either leave it as bn equal 2 over n pi 1 minus minus 1 to the n. And then I can plug that value in here and I have my Fourier series, which in this case includes only sine terms. And when a Fourier series includes only sine terms, we call it a Fourier sine series. Just to emphasize the fact that it's only signs. And that will happen when f is an odd function. If we had uh, f as an even function, then the sine term would be gone. We would have all the bn zero, and the a values would all be, or would would be non-zero. Maybe some of them would be zero, but a lot of them would be non-zero. And so that one would be called a Fourier cosine series, and that would be when your function is even. Okay, so let's get back to this here. Um, so we could also write it as in pieces, you'll notice when n is even, this term here is 1. Minus 1 to the n even is 1. So this is 1 minus 1, and I get 0 here when n is even. And when n is odd, this one is minus 1. So it's 1 minus minus 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So this is 4 over n pi when n is odd. And now you might wonder, why is it zero? Even though it's an odd function, I wasn't expecting to get zeros, and I only get half of them zero. And the reason is that when n is odd, what I end up having is sine terms that have a full period within one piece. And you can see here, when I multiply 1 by a full period of this sine term, the positive area cancels the negative area, and I get 0. And if I had an odd term in there, then I would have 3 of those in there, and they don't cancel. And so that's giving us a little insight into why our term looks so sort of unique in that way. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, let's write this out and see what we have. So we have f of t is approximately equal to the Fourier sine series, which in this case will be 4 over pi, that's when n is equal to 1, times the sine of pi, uh, let's see, what is it? It's uh, n pi, so it's pi t plus 4 over 3 pi sine of 3 pi t. And then next term plus and so on over 5 pi sine of 5 pi t. And so on. Now you'll notice that sine of 0 is always 0. So at t equals 0, every one of these terms in this expansion will be exactly 0. But what is f of t? Now you'll notice I didn't actually specify it. If I had defined f of t to be 0 at the jumps and an empty dot up here, then this would actually be a pretty accurate Fourier series. In other words, it would be point-wise correct everywhere. But that's maybe not the way it would necessarily always be defined. I could have defined my Fourier series, or my original function, to include this point and not include this point, and to include this one and not include that one, in which case the Fourier series would have a zero value here and would not quite be the same as the function. So I can actually do that. I'll do that in green. If you took the whole series, you would end up with green here, green there, and a hole here, hole there, 
green, and so on. So that's why these Fourier series do not always converge perfectly point-wise, but they are um, at the best representation that you can get with periodic functions, or with, with the periodic trig functions. Um, and they're quite general. You can use them for any periodic function um, to approximate them.